Hello and welcome to a long dark tutorial. This is a step-by-step -step guide for the Hopeless Rescue Challenge. The challenge is designed to be completed within seven days. A few years ago, I made a version of this, uh, teaching you how to do it in 24 hours or less with no sleep, utilizing coffee and stim packs, as well as some efficiency and a lot of experience to get through this. I'm a lot better at this challenge now, so today we attempt to break my personal best, which is 16 hours and zero minutes. We, of course, are going to be returning to the Hopeless Rescue Challenge. The Long Dark is an open-ended survival game. The challenges, on the other hand, offer objective-based experiences that last one to three hours, and for us it lasts about 90 minutes when we get good at it. This is my favorite of the challenges, designed to be completed within a week. When you first start, it's going to take you about that long, but when you get good, you will be able to push your time. I pushed it under 24, and now I consistently do 18-ish hours. When I get a really good roll of the dice, I can do 16, and today I've gotten under 17 twice, attempting to record this video for you guys, so we will try again together. This video will be chock full of tips and tricks for the Hopeless Rescue Challenge, as well as just general good advice for this game. If you appreciate it, be sure to click the like button. I forgot to ask for that last time at the top of the video, and it slowly climbed up to nearly 30,000 views, and I wish I had, so please go ahead and click the like button. Make up for last time when I forgot to ask. We will begin the Hopeless Rescue Challenge, and we're going to do one thing different than last time. We're going to roll through starts. We're going to start, and uh, if we do not get a stim pack in the first med kit, we're not going to continue. We'll exit and start again. It might take two, three, four tries, but let's give it a go. Our goal is to push under 18 hours. My personal best is 16 hours and zero minutes, and we're going to try and get as close to that as possible. But I'd say this method is consistently good for helping you get close to 18, and there we go. On our third try, we got lucky. So now we return to the strategy from the last video, looter and runner. And in order to push faster, we got a cup of coffee. What an excellent start. Grab anything that's obvious here. I usually grab medications, tin can, tinder, and if this locker's open, I search it, and also any flares. There's usually one or two in the trapper cabin. In my previous version of this challenge, I was content to get out of here in about nine minutes. We have gotten out in five. Instead of walking straight and slightly off to our right, we are going to go off to our left here. We're going to get to the top of the hill at the center of your screen, and we're going to follow the top of it off to the right, and we're going to head to the Mystery Lake Camp Office. My preference is to not give you long chunks of silence in these videos, but you have to be able to... Uh, do every single leg of this challenge in a complete blizzard because you never know when you're going to get one. And that means doing it and doing it again. And until you know this terrain like the back of your hand, and I am almost there, uh, you are going to not want to miss a moment. So I won't cut away. Instead, I will simply speed up my footage. And instead of giving you, hopefully, a long cap in me talking, this time I'm going to try and edit it so that my talking goes over top of the sped up footage. And hopefully, we're almost at the Mystery Lake camp office already. This med kit represents your second chance at a stim, and once you get to this place, it might be a good idea to pop in your inventory, drop everything you don't need, and have a quick peek at the clothing you're wearing. I always load up on Tinder here. This place has tons of newspapers, and it has tin cans. I grab one from the floor here. There is another on the shelf right here, and, oh, a tin of coffee. Another excellent boon for us. Uh, I'll grab this can opener, and as the looter, we want to be quick. We want to be out of the camp office in under one hour of time. When I find a soft drink in this place, I often drink it. Uh, I'm a few minutes away from drinking my first coffee, so I'm not going to have to worry about it for a while. Another tin can here at the top of the stairs, more tinder, and you can check these drawers for clothing if you're feeling lucky. I like to stock up on painkillers and bandages, another tin can by the stove, get ourselves a six or seven or eight of each, and then with antibiotics and antiseptic, I usually grab one each, because that's all I think I'll ever need, and then we head down and out, and we'll see if we made it in under an hour. 58 minutes, so this portion is the same. If you don't have any rocks, you can grab some in this pass right up here between these rocks, some right here, and otherwise hustle down to the derailment. If you haven't found a flare yet, you will find two or maybe even three right up here. They're all off to the left side of these cars, and this is a prime area for wolves. So keep your guard up, and if you see one and you don't have a flare, throw a rock to distract him while you scoop up one or two of these. There should be one here, and there should be another one up here. If you check 
back towards the train car, there is sometimes a third one or a third location for one on the ground somewhere over here. There used to be a chance of a med kit up here in this little snowbank by the dead deer, and it is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. So we head straight into wolf territory, and I will speed up the footage again as we hustle our way down to the Carter Hydro Dam. This is the exact same as the 24-hour challenge. Really, the big difference for us guys is less time spent looting. There's not a lot you can do to increase your time as a runner, and you just need to spend less time standing still. I threw away those two stones now that I've got flares. Weight management is one of the things that will make you stand still. And as we step in this trailer, let's light a flare. There's a wolf outside, and a flare lit here should guide us. There is no med kit on that top shelf, and no accelerant in this corner, so this trailer is a bust. Let's dash out of it and across to the other one. This one does have a med kit every time, and it also has another soft drink. If you manage to get a couple of soft drinks in you here in Mystery Lake, you probably won't have to eat again for quite a while. So I usually just drink them when I find them, take the calories, and set myself up for later. Now be sure to check this med kit. This room also has a very good chance of clothing, and there's a chance of coffee on the shelf here on your left. Check the beds for clothing as well as the floor. Today we got lucky and we got a ski jacket and it looks like there's some gloves that we also need up on this shelf. We will not search the lockers. We are aiming to cut as much time from our game as possible and that means looting less. From here we dash across the road and up into the Carter Hydro Dam. This is a place where you can, <laughs> you can really shave time off. I used to spend probably an hour inside this building and we've got it down to really the bare minimum. Now that is because I don't know where to find, <laughs> you know, I only know two spots now uh, to look in here for the emergency stims. And if I don't see them, I just sort of move on. We skip a lot of lockers. Uh, there's a bathroom off to the right. And I habitually habitually check this room because it used to have a stim and a pry bar and I never find anything in it anymore. So if there's a better place to spend my two minutes of looting, let me know. Uh, I know there is a locker upstairs that is a med locker, but I never used to find stims in it. So I tend to stick to this. And if I don't find one here, uh, there is a desk in the corner of this room that has a chance of having a stim. The flare's on the shelf now, and this desk is the one that will occasionally have a stim. We didn't get so lucky today, um, but there is another new spot. When hinterland taketh away, for example, the med kit on the snowbank, it giveth. So there is a new spot here we can check. And if you're going to search lockers, I usually just like to grab these two on the way out. Uh, we have had very bad luck today, and we have checked, I think, five containers and found no clothing that we would like to wear. So this is a new uh, loot spot on your right at the bottom of these stairs, often accompanied with a dead body, is a stim and painkillers. Not always, but very, very often. Uh, I, in <laughs> when we are trying to set a record time, this is all I do, guys. I hop in, I look for the stim, and I move on. And if something else is obvious and presents itself to me, I take it. But beyond that, we are trying to make the best possible time. So that's what we do here. We will leave this and head to the lower dam. Now, the best I ever get out of here is two, two and a half hours, something like that. We should be on pace uh, to push that and come close. I'll often grab a flare if there is one here, and I will check one or two of these lockers down here if I need clothing. We're actually in pretty good condition for clothing. That ski jacket we found is excellent. I think it was 87%. Ah, and our bad luck continues. Let's push out and check our time. Two hours and 18 minutes. That is close to record pace for me, guys. So I will speed up the footage again for you, but um, not immediately. What I would like to do is show you how I descend uh, this location. And it is another location where you have to deal with a wolf. So the flare lit earlier at those trailers will, if not get you to the cave up ahead, it will at least get you past the wolf here. So there is a shortcut somewhere off to our right. And I know some people use it. I don't. Uh, it seems risky, and I often fall every time I try it. It's sort of a pixel walking technique, and I prefer to just follow the game, the paths the game gives me, and take the risks accordingly. So once I get down onto this ice, I will speed up our travel, and I will show you guys uh, the quickest way through. This is a really a straight line. We come to this point and you follow the hydro lines. Uh, they will take you off the river and up into the hills and then back down to the river. 
around to a cave and that cave is a chance for us to start warming up again so i tend to use all my sprint out here on the outside and then walk through the cave if possible I have increased gamma, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm doing here, and I've put the speed at two instead of five. That way, you don't miss anything. This cave can be dark, but I cut through here. Then it's a right turn, a short walk, and a left turn, and then a straight. We will enter into a large room with a staircase, and this is a cave I can do almost in the pitch black of night. Now that I am so familiar with it, and it would be good for you to get to this point too. It sucks to waste a flare here if you only have a couple and matches will not do the job. So across this plank bridge, then we do a 180 turn. We go straight down to the end of this area. Then we make a hard left, 90 degrees. And then at the end of this, we simply strafe right. The tunnel continues in the same direction, and there is your light. And our camera is off, and we are headed back into the wilderness. All right, guys, we have reached Pleasant Valley. There is a safer way down from here, but this, when I'm trying to make great time, is how I do it. Uh, I sort of treat it like moguls and skip to the shortest drop possible that will get me to the ground without hurting myself. And once I am there, I begin using my sprint again. I like to go up behind these rocks, and I have a very familiar route. I put this big rock here on my right, and as we cross the road, there will be another big rock on my right. This valley full of trees is another prime wolf location, so be ready. And we have lit one, and then you just push through the valley and up the hill, save a little sprint if you can, and try and get to the top. I also drank a cup of coffee at the start of this uh, uh, area as I came out of that cave, and that means we can sprint and we shouldn't be in terrible shape. If I have the capacity, I grab one or two logs here. We will be using them at the farmhouse for our first fire, and then we search the radio control tower. This is a great spot. There's often a med kit here on the ground. There is good clothing, and there is a high probability of coffee here in this location as well. And you can find stims. We did get coffee. I'll often grab the water with it and matches if I see them. Check the microwave. And we got an expedition parker, guys. So we really don't need to spend much time on clothing. The loot has been good to us. Uh, not when we check lockers, but when we just search. Here, behind this cardboard box, a chance of an emergency stim. If you didn't get a med kit, be sure to check and search lockers if you're desperate for clothing. Other than that, grab what you need and get out. It used to be I would aim for four hours to get out of here in a 24-hour run, and I think we're doing a little bit better than that. And we have saved stamina. I always like to have a little bit of stamina for this journey, but we got lucky, and we got a cup of coffee, and it is still active, which means we're going to be able to sprint quite consistently. Now we do the mogul technique again. I come down to this little crevasse, and there are a couple of little jumps, and I just simply one, two, three, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and down, and then we sprint. And this, in a more or less straight line, maybe slightly to the right, will take you directly to the Pleasant Valley Farmstead, which is where we will start a fire and attempt to brew six or 12 cups of coffee. I think we have 10 uh, possible in our inventory now, and we have the water for two to four cups. So what I could do is walk straight into the kitchen and start up the fire there, or you can walk in the front door and hit the bathroom taking the water out of the toilet on your way to the stove to light your fire and brew your coffee. In an ideal world, this is the only fire you will start in a 16 to 18 hour run. Uh, and if you have to, you'll start another one up at the top of the mountain in the plain and brew coffee there. But in a perfect world, this is it. It is your one and only fire and your one and only coffee brewing chance. So we have got two tins so far. If we were to find a third in this house, we could make 15 cups of coffee and that's enough for this entire journey. Speed up the footage and meet you there. So we opted for the version where we walk straight in to cook our coffee. Uh, this is a point where if you're efficient, it's excellent. It, there is often a tin of coffee on the shelf. As soon as you walk in, it's straight across from the bathroom. As you walk out of the main floor bathroom, you'll see it. Um, and I, if I can, and have everything I need, like a little bit of water to go with my coffee, I will add all my fuel here. I bring some from the radio control hut just in case there isn't any by the stove. I don't want to get distracted running into the living room to look for wood so we can get coffee going and we might as well do it in as many slots as possible i believe i only have water for four coffees so in a perfectly efficient world i would start these and go move on and come back to do a batch of six later because we have the capacity to make 10 but it's also possible that there is more coffee in this place uh, specifically in the office so i would like to check that but we need water to continue making more coffee we'll also have room on the stove to make some soup so in this room there's often 
socks off to your left beside the bathroom sink, and there's a med kit on this side here. And straight out of this room on the shelf out there is where you would find coffee right there. And we have room to actually add to our stove, so I'll grab a can of soup, and that will give us one additional can for when we get to the mountaintop, should we decide we need it. My strategy for the 24-hour run was to bring eight cans to the top of the mountain and light four fires and brew eight cups of coffee in each batch. Uh, if we can get away with it, we don't want to light a fire up there, but it's still nice to have all the cans and be as prepared as possible for an efficient coffee brewing session up on the mountaintop. This room, off to your left, will sometimes have a tin of coffee on the shelf, a cup of coffee, or in this wardrobe at the bottom will be a med kit. We didn't get much luck. I did grab salty food. Salty food will let you pound several cups of coffee if you so need to get up a ladder in place of energy drinks. Or uh, By ladder, I mean rope. Uh, salty food will let you get several cups of coffee in a row into your system. You'll drink one, eat a little ketchup chip, drink some more coffee, eat a little ketchup chip, and then you can force your way up one of these ropes without the energy drink or stim. We check these drawers and there's often a loose piece of clothing here. I don't think that'll help us, but we'll go stand by the fire and sort our clothing. Now we have another batch of coffee to do, so we grab the upstairs toilet water. We have that as well, and we have a can of soup we can start. I know we have extra fuel, so we might as well add it and get this fire as warm as possible although we're maxed out we will cook up coffee where possible here and then we'll cook up a can of soup on our empty slot If I end up 11 or 12 minutes short, you can see that time has definitely been wasted here at this phase, guys. You want to get do your best <laughs> to get through this as soon as possible. I meant to drink a cup of coffee there, so we'll wait and we'll have to drink one in a minute on our way out of the place. Let's grab a torch and do the basement while our last batch cooks. This basement has uh, a med kit in it by the entrance, and it often has accelerant, possibly medications on the shelf up here to our uh, on our left as we walk through here we did get accelerant and matches this time there are two lockers sometimes one or both is locked and running shoes our bad luck continues we also have a washer dryer these tend to give you socks and long underwear in a ratio that i can't find anywhere else but we didn't get anything so we'll head back up to our stove and we'll try and spend as little time as possible standing These will be our final cups of coffee. We should have 10 minus any that we drink, and we should pick up all our cans. It looks like from this batch of coffee, I've wasted next to no time. The first batch had 11 minutes wasted on it for some of these cups of coffee. We will drink one now. That'll give us a fatigue boost and a warmth boost, and we're going to eat this, and it might be the last thing we have to eat for a while as well. It's also a good time to sort through your inventory, anything that you don't need and you aren't taking on the next leg of the journey, you might as well just drop and get rid of, and here's the best place to do it while you are warming up and not getting cold. So our inventory is sorted, we'll eat this soup at the last possible minute and get as much warmth bonus as possible, grab our can, and head outside where I'll throw away this nearly burnt out torch. In a 24-hour run, I used to like to get out of here in six hours. We are out in five, so we're making excellent time. I stopped to drop all that water I had forgotten. Make sure not to haul it up the mountain if you don't have to. We had an extra liter and a half. And then you get on this ice river and you hustle all the way to this sort of T section, a big flat frozen lake, and across it is a burnt-out cabin. We're going to go straight past that and up this hill. This is my preferred route, and it takes us up to the remains of one of the two plane crashes we'll visit on this uh, adventure and if you have made warm coffee and you are having a cold day this is about the last chance you'll get to drink it while it's still hot so if you want stop and drink a hot cup of coffee and give yourself an extended warmth boost i also went in and dropped i believe right there my uh, bedroll that is something i like to do early because i don't use it this is a no sleep challenge and we're trying to get there in the fastest time possible so up into this plane i will remove our sped up time and this is another possible location of a stim i think we have two Two so far and this is our third we usually don't grab the clothing here it's usually frozen and wet and if there's an MRE or an energy bar I grab it and then we move on and we're almost done with Pleasant Valley my friends coming out of this plane we need to continue roughly in this direction we'll head towards that big rock at the center of your screen and then we'll make a slight left we'll go downhill and back uphill putting all those big black rocks you see ahead on our right once we get to the top, we'll slip through a couple of trees and we'll make our way to the abandoned prepper's cache. This is a great location to stop and get your hacksaw. You need one of these for the journey ahead, so make sure to grab one. 
And there we go. If there is more of value in this room, I don't know about it, but the room has been redesigned, so it's possible I'm missing something. We're going to come out, and even though we still have a little bit of stamina left, I think I drank one too many cups of coffee, I could have saved one, we're going to jump to the stim. We'll get to the bottom of the rope, and we will fire off our first stim. We're going to use it not just to get up this rope while tired, but to sprint on the other side of it. So let's go. Here you hustle down this path until you transition zones. Somewhere around this corner, you will enter Timberwolf Mountain. And here we continue until we see the landing gear. Now, this is a key and dangerous region. We do not have anything to deal with the most dangerous creature, which can be here, which is the moose. If he's here, he's often off to your right, and there's one other possible location for him. I don't see him, so I think we got lucky. Now we head straight ahead, and we look for a bent and broken over tree ahead and slightly to the right. That is the path to the mountaineering hut, which is where we need to stop next. Welcome back, friends. You know this challenge is about stims and coffee. If I've missed some, tell me. And we have arrived. Here is another chance at a stim and a med kit and another hack hacksaw if you haven't found one yet. I just dropped the worst of my two hacksaws and now we'll crouch down, grab a flare from here. There is also a med kit on this shelf. I see a flare shell off to the right that we'll have to make sure to grab. Can't hurt to have too many of those. And there's tinder and wood here. If you're freezing, possibility of clothes here and uh, a coat underneath the bed it looks like we got a down vest today which doesn't help us we have an expedition parka and a ski jacket so we're already set guys it looks like it has been eight hours and 13 minutes and we are leaving the mountaineering hut this is close to my best time ever and i consider this about the halfway point whatever time i have here i can double it and make a pretty good guess that that will be my final time so at eight hours what did i say in 18 minutes, we're on pace for 1640 or something like that, if I can keep my pace going, guys. So let's speed back up and see how far we can get. Coming across this lake, I'd like to head to the right of this tree and go slightly uphill. This is bear country. He often wanders this region, and the moose has more than one place he can be. Here in Timberwolf Mountain, the other is up ahead. This is also the wolfiest part of the map, so I light a flare around here, and this is a new strategy for me, guys. I always head to these containers. If there is no moose standing right next to them, we have stuff we can get here, and you want to put your hacksaw to work. This first container gives you flares and fuel. If you're short on accelerant, grab them. I tend to grab... I don't know, three, four flares extra and leave the marine flares behind. They burn fast and we don't really need them. Flares can actually get you overweight really fast here. The second container contains medical stuff. I never find a stim here, or I haven't yet, but I'd be sure to check every time just in case. It seems like the odds should be the same as up at the plane in that medical container. And this last one, this is really the key. It makes this journey possible even if you've had really bad luck with stims so far. Here you will find one, two, or maybe even three energy drinks mixed in with all those soft drinks. So I leave all the soft drinks and grab the energy drinks. I will speed us up and take you to the next rope in the journey. I will resist the urge to add gamma, and you guys can see what this looks like for me as well. We've got a flare burning from that region, and it should keep us well lit as we move through here. We head slight to the left, and then across another one of these log bridges here. The path is pretty simple. Just keep the rocks to your right. Don't get distracted <clears throat> getting yourself off to the left, and we'll continue on. There is a big horizontal tree here. It sort of points at a cave. If you're in desperate condition, that cave often has wood in it where you can start a fire. And here I actually drank another cup of coffee so we could sprint. It's probably not necessary. But up here, if I have the option, I am going to use a stim. At the top of this rope is a very long, solid sprint. And I want to make the most of it and get good time. So we'll get ourselves a stim ready. And we'll head to the bottom of this rope where we'll fire it off. Because of the stim, I actually employ a little gamma, so while we go 5x speed, you can see top of the rope, make a left. Put that big rock on your right and keep going till the smaller rock can pass on your left. You'll enter into this little cluster of trees and our path will get a bit more straightforward. We continue straight until we have an option to make an uphill left-hand turn. There is a forked tree up here that often marks the path for us. I drink a little bit of coffee here, but it's decision time, guys. If you're going to brew coffee at the top of the mountain, you can drink as much as you want. If you want to avoid it, you should save those coffees. So make your left-hand turn, 
continue straight. I pass through this little cluster of trees, and then in between these two sets of rocks, our path will curve to the right, and we'll go uphill. Here, I'm going to switch to 2x speed. We decide instead of a uh, stim, we're going to use our one and only energy drink. If you have energy drinks, this is a great rope to use the energy drink on because you can't sprint endlessly at the top of this anyway, and this is a good spot to save a stim. Every stim you save, you can use on the back half to sprint down roads or up hills and cut down hours off your journey. So we're now at 2x speed. I light a flare at the top here, slight left, and you go downhill. Right here is a cave. It is a very dark cave, so a flare is a really good idea. If you are doing the 24-hour challenge and brewing yourself a big old heap of coffee at the top, this cave gives you wood. There are two to three pieces in each location. One location is right here with the flare next to a possible dead body in the snow. I am only grabbing one log. We're just going to heat up a couple of cups, and uh, even then, that decision is one that I probably didn't need to do. We're quite warm, and we have quite good gear. The other location for wood is right here. This is why you must have at least one stim for the journey. You can do every other rope without one. They take about 40 hand over hand movements. This last rope takes 60 hand over hand movements. And if we're going to be grabbing all this wood, and you will if you need to brew coffee, get yourself to the top of the rope. Be sure to check out the 24 hour challenge and see how I set up all four fires and brew eight cups of coffee at a time. But here we're going to make one fire and heat up two of our cups of coffee and that's it. Come out of the cave, turn right, and follow the path around to the right. Don't get lost to the left. Head up into these trees and find your final rope. I'll throw down my flare, hit my last stim, and we'll go to the top. Even overweight with six logs in your inventory, a stim will get you to the top and sprint you all the way to the plane, which contains the flare pistol. We have now done point A to point B. If you're doing a 24-hour run, you're usually here in a row about 13 or 14 hours. We are making excellent time. Head to this one med kit and check it, though I never find a stim inside. It's always worth looking. And then this last container on the left, the closest of the two compartments right here, contains medical supplies. You will find one or two stims, hopefully, in this container. And then we'll turn and grab our flare pistol. Uh, you can then make the decision on what else to look for. Uh, there is coffee and water up here. I won't show you those containers because we don't have time. Go watch my 24-hour version and then head into this emergency kit. Grab yourself the flare pistol and every possible flare. If you're going to be lighting a fire and you didn't bring it, there's often accelerant here and another one of these boxes contains accelerant. But again, I don't have time to show you. What we're going to do now is light ourselves a simple fire just to top up our warmth and warm up two cups of coffee. This is the point for me, guys, where I possibly could have broken my own record. I decide to light this fire, warm up a couple of cups of coffee, and open the container that's immediately on our right. One side has warm clothes for your bottom, one side has warm clothes for your top. But I spend probably 20 minutes here that I could have shaved off heating up these two cups of coffee and improving my clothing. Improving your clothing is good. If it's cold and you're dealing with a blizzard, that's fine, but I'm warm. I really didn't need to. And every time, if we decide to do this, we spend time sawing, then we spend time searching. Then we spend time deciding which of the items to keep. If you are keeping any of this really nice warm clothing, this is a good tip. Don't put it on yet. Um, decide what you need to keep and drop the rest. But then your best clothing, you can actually take off. We're about to descend a mountain in a very dangerous fashion that can actually damage and ruin good clothes. So if you were to find a great condition expedition parka in one of these containers and then descend the mountain poorly, you'd undo its goodness. So grab the best socks. Uh, the, the loot is sort of random in terms of percentage. So I tend to focus on the things that come with a high percentage. If this coat was 22%, I might not have bothered picking it up, but it's 61, so we'll pick it up and wear it. Uh, my snow pants, on the other hand, are really poor quality, so I'm definitely going to drop those shortly after I put them on, if I do put them on, and then we'll just grab the best of our items, socks, etc. I am pretty confident in my ability to descend this mountain, so I go ahead and put everything on. Until you know a route down this mountain, it's best to keep all of these items in your inventory and put them on at the bottom. Just go ahead 
ahead and do that. So let's get the best of our gear, combat pants, and for the moment we'll keep our snow pants. We will keep uh, the climbing socks and basically drop everything else. Put your best set of clothing on if you're confident in your descent. If not, wait till you get to the bottom. So we pick up our coffee and it looks like we didn't waste a terrible amount of time in doing so. We are going to drop this flare. You can drop your hacksaw at this point and if you haven't dropped your bed roll yet, you can. You do not need more than a can or two to go from this point in the journey for emergencies and I drop my can opener as well. Have a quick check and see if there's anything else you can do to get yourself under 15 kilos, but we're there. Uh, it's okay to be over 15 kilos if you're gonna drop some of your clothing at the bottom of the hill. Make sure you check that medical container and come down here. I always check this body. It has very good loot, sometimes including energy drinks and stims. We got one today, so we'll use that energy drink on the back half. Now, pay close attention. I will probably not speed this up at all. This is the key to this journey. If you guys can pull this off, you can do this very quickly. So I go ahead and drink one of my cups of coffee here, give myself a warmth boost, and I know I'll be able to use the sprint uh, a little bit later on in this journey. But this is a very dangerous descent, and it's not quite guaranteed, but I think I do a pretty good job of it here. So we head down and here at least in this phase you will have to do a couple of drops so just be gentle and try and drop yourself to the next safest location and go from there once you get to this point you curve to the right head to this little piece of land <laughs> the lowest of them and then we'll go to the point of this snowbank at which point we drop down and turn right again if you see just up here is another place to drop down we'll drop to that lowest level and we'll carry on again come down come down and drop. Now we stick as close to the right as we can. We're going to transition into a nearly vertical face. So it's very dangerous and you could quite possibly damage your clothing. I am good enough at this that I can put on my good clothes at the top and make it down here. We have one final set of uh, drops and this is the path I prefer to take. It gives you one sort of big drop right here and if you get away with it, you're in good shape. If you did hurt yourself, stop here. Bandages, painkillers, etc. and change into your undamaged clothes, dropping the clothes that might have been damaged by falls. Now, if you've got it, drink some coffee, assuming it's in your inventory, and do a sprint. Here, I decide to ditch those snow pants. We're pretty warm, and I don't think we're going to have to worry much. So saving that 5% makes us faster. And they were really low-quality snow pants, so it doesn't help. I think it's time to once again speed up the footage and help get you guys through the end of this journey and out of Timberwolf Mountain. We are on the back half and pushing for a record pace. I reached the mountaintop this time in 10 hours. That's about as fast as I've ever done. We we're 10 hours and four minutes to the very tip top of the mountain. Uh, I tend to use these orange flares. Those marine ones don't work great when it comes to dealing with these wolves. But at this point, we're just reversing our course. We're looking for that little bit of wing, and we're looking for the landing gear that marks the way out of Timberwolf Mountain. And we have one rope ahead of us. It's a rope descent, and you don't have to use coffee to get down it, but I do in this case. I don't want to risk slipping and falling or anything else that could disrupt a very, very good run. Now, that said, this is a very, very good run but it's not my record pace. And having watched myself as the editor put this together, guys, I kind of want to dive right back in and try this again and see if I can crack that 16-hour mark again. I don't know that I can, but watching this, if I get the right conditions, I can. And you can too, well, which, is, which is why I make this video. I hope you get better at it. It took me seven days <laughs> the first time I completed it with uh, a few minutes to spare, and I was very happy with that. And then with time, I kept pushing it down and down. And a couple of years ago, I cracked that 24-hour mark. And since then, I've been pushing and pushing and trying to get better. But my 16-hour record is a few years old now, and I have yet to best it in a long time. This is about as close as I've come. And watching this as the editor, like I said, I want to redo this. So this back half of the journey is pretty straightforward, guys. You have to decide when and where to use your stims. If I had three um, at this point, I think I have two stims and an energy drink. If I had three, I would definitely fire one off here, but instead I wait until the point where I know I can use it to get all the way to the next cave. So I chug along here just with coffee and sprinting, keeping this wolf at my back. And uh, there is a point up ahead. We go past the derelict cabins. The road kind of curves a little bit left and right. By the way, if you haven't loaded your flare pistol yet, do it here. There's a lot of wolves in this territory and a possibility of a bear. 
flare, and it couldn't hurt to have that ready to go. But in general, I just rock the flare until I uh, need <laughs> to use the flare pistol. And there's a point up here. Once we see these hydro lines, see that tree pointing out. Once I am in line with that tree, I drop my flare and I fire up whatever I have left in terms of stims. Right now I have two. I'm saving one for the lake and my energy drink for the back half. But if I'd had that extra stim, I would have used it to cover the distance we just did on foot. And now we fire off our stim. And at 5x speed, you can watch me fly through this up this hill and if you fire your stim there you should get all the way to the top of this hill which can be grueling without a stim and all the way to this cave now this cave i will switch once again to 2x speed for us and we can chug through just so you don't miss it this cave is great it has a chance of a stim now there used to be one uh, at the end of this first hallway, just next to this box, I haven't found it in a while. Here we find an MRE, and I eat a little just to make sure we don't uh, starve, and then push on. It's a series, it's a left-hand uphill turn, and another left-hand turn, and then we continue following the path. It curves a little bit up and to the right, and we'll hit a V and go up and to the right again. This room has the potential of a med kit. If there is one, it's up on the shelf here above where we'll find this. And we uh, have one last spot we can check in the hopes of a stim. Usually this cave will yield one for you. And if it does, it means you get to fly across the ice of the coastal highway. The stim should be right here where that accelerant is. We didn't get any this time. So grab a flare if you need one on your way out. Because that cave behind us didn't yield a stim, we decided to drink coffee here. If not, I would just generally get myself down to the ice, and there I would use two stims in a row to fly across the frozen bay here at the coastal highway. But this stage is really uh, important. You can hustle down this hill at great speed with or without a stim, and then you head over to this lake. This is hard to do in a blizzard. What I like to do is line up these tall log uh, pillars, the two, the last two on the right point generally in the direction you need to go. So if you want to line yourself up, you'll end up in the little sort of dip at the end of an island between the island and its little rocky outcropping. If you fired off a stim on the lake, it will take you all the way up to this point, at which point I'd fire off another. We didn't get one from that last cave, so we're short by one, and uh, it, it makes it a little bit harder to break your own record, but this is one of the ways you do it. When you get just about to this point, you can drop your flare, fire off a stim, and hustle across the last chunk of the lake. Here I aim for this little gap between the rocks and I head uphill to the road. This section we travel to, we get another region change and we're now in the broken highway. You have to crouch to get through this section and if I have it, I would use another stim or an energy drink here. Make as much time as you can and hustle as fast as you can. Push on past wolves and up into these hills. You have to do a little bit of navigation to get yourself up and over to this cave, and we're in. I will switch us back to 2x speed so you do not get lost. This is our final cave. This is the coal mine connect number three coal mine connector. This takes us to the final region. Desolation point where our lighthouse is, and we can fire off our flare gun and end this challenge. Uh, the cave is pretty straightforward and I tend to get nothing out of it. I just pass through as quickly uh, as possible. Although I will say many, many times I've needed to get here to save myself. But if you look guys, see the health bar at the bottom left? That's a resource you can use up. And I was pushing an amazing time today and I got really incredible conditions. You don't get as lucky as we got in this run very often, which is why I'm reticent to start over. But that bar is a resource you can use, and I could have walked tired for longer. I really didn't need to stop and do that top fire. It looks like we never would have gotten cold. We are very, very warm, and I played it a little too safe, and you guys will have to tow that line. I will say, when you don't play it safe, you get to the bottom of this hill, and one slip can actually kill you. But I did such a good job in my descents today that I don't think I ever had fall damage or had to fix a sprained ankle or wrist. But that's pretty common, and 
if your health bar, that heart bar is low, by the time you get to this point, your vision gets blurry and your steps get wobbly and it becomes very hard. This final section always has wolves and they can sometimes get trapped in these little uh, alleyways towards the bridges, but I don't think they can cross bridges. So once you get across the first one, you're safe. This is our final destination, the lighthouse at Desolation Point. I haven't shown you the clock in a bit because I know I'm over my record, which like I said is 16 hours and zero minutes, but we, there you go. We are really close to the prediction I made at the halfway point. I said it was going to take us about uh, 16 hours and 40 minutes. That was my guess, uh, given the point we were at. And here we are. In this final section, I always throw my flare, pull out my pistol, and as soon as I get out, I take a side step to the right while aiming and fire. No need to go outside. Just get this flare off. And it might be the difference between 16 and 1601. In our case, 1641. I'm pretty sure that's my second best time ever, and I'm really happy to have captured it on camera. I was trying to make a guide for how to finish this in 18 hours or less, so I wasn't being as ambitious as I could have been. And if you are seeing this, it means when I tried again, I failed. But, <laughs> but if I try again and succeed, no one will ever hear these words, and you will be watching a video of me completing this in under 16 hours. Guys, this has been full of tips and tricks, and the last time, I forgot to ask people to like it, so please hit the like button. My name is Unite the Clans. You can subscribe for more, although I don't play a lot of the long dark. However, I have many old videos of me playing it that you can check out by clicking on the screen now, including my 24-hour challenge. So if this one is too intense for you and you need something a little easier, try that. Thank you so much.